here's what I've got for you. As many of you know, I've done a lot of 3D printing. I've basically hired out all my design work until recently. And what I want to show you is some of the things that I myself have drawn using Tinkercad. Tinkercad is frankly a really robust and pretty darn easy to learn uh, drawing software online. It, it, it's free, it costs you nothing, and there's a gazillion tutorials on YouTube to help you learn how to do it, even some paid courses here and there. But uh, this is that's the, the program I use to draw what you're about to see. So uh, basically what I've done is draw parts that I need that are hard to find and are just, you know, out of frustration, I'm like, I can't find this, I need it. And, you know, I, maybe I don't want to pay a premium for it on, on eBay or someplace else. So um, I just decided I'd make my own parts. So this is what I'm showing you here tonight. So what we have first is, uh, this is a stock Diecast Promotions turnout exhaust for a Peterbilt. You'll notice it's chrome, and what I needed was the miter cut, and my source for these dried up, and so I decided to use Tinkercad and draw my own. This is the one I used as a template. Now, how did I draw this? Okay, so I bought one of these digital micrometers, and this just was great to to take measurements and get it very precise and you know in some cases rather than say 4.34 millimeters I would round up or down to the nearest whole number or even to the half so this is what I use to do all of my measuring with okay so this is the factory one I used as a template more or less then we have uh, the first one I drew now you may be able to see this or not uh, let me compare the factory one to the to my version. This is version 1.0 here. You can see it's much narrower and if you look at it this way, I don't know if you can see this in the camera shot, but it's oblong. In Tinkercad they have what is called an elbow shape that you can pull into your uh, area, your field. Um, I'm using the wrong language, but you pull this out onto the workspace. Well, I didn't realize it that when I stretched out these different parts, uh, because it's an elbow, it has kind of an oblong oval shape. So not realizing that, I ordered a test print. So this is, so I drew it up in Tinkercad, downloaded the file, uploaded it to shapeways.com, and then ordered one in frosted, now it used to be frosted, now it's called detail plastic, to see how I did. And so this one is incorrect. So I went back to the drawing board and learned from my mistake here and made version 2.0, which is really, really good. This one's okay. Now I haven't actually fit this on a truck yet to see if it fits a truck, but if we lay it on the factory one, you can see it looks really, really good. I mean, it is close. It's about as close and close in width as the factory version so I am very confident that I can put this on a truck and it's going to be okay now my next step is to get these vacuum plated uh, at another source okay so first project this was the very first one I did oh also you'll notice that this pipe down here is you'll notice that there's a lip right here where this does not have now a different process was used to make this piece rather than 3d printing this was manufactured commercially probably using an injection mold or something anyway so learning from my mistake how this elbow made my pipe oblong i just went ahead and cut what i didn't need off this one and then put a regular pipe here over this elbow which is what caused that lip but then what happened is you can see it here how that's kind of wide it's oblong right here at the at the bend well I lost all that oblong shape when I put a regular round pipe over it and then put the bevel on it one thing I did do that uh, the diecast promotions version doesn't have you'll notice on their version there's a little indentation here well I went ahead and made that indentation much deeper for no particular reason other than I just wanted to see if I could and I did okay Next, this is a tag axle, 
Again, using a diecast promotions as my template. This is what the factory version looks like, stock. Okay, so I used my micrometer, measured everything here. This is version 1.0 again. And here's how version 1.0 turned out. Turned out pretty good in my opinion. I think this is okay. I mean, one thing I do like here is you can see all the holes clear through, whereas in this version, you cannot. And actually, the rubber tire from the Diecast Promotions rim fits over my plastic very well. I mean, that just fit really well. However, you know, not all things are perfect when you're learning, and that's okay. Uh, let me see. I don't know where my tire went that was for this rim. I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is my 3D printed wheel. Uh, I just white, uh, covered it with Molotow Chrome. Okay, and this is the tire that came with it. So this is the plastic tire. They don't look quite proportional, but on the micrometer, they're, you know, within a half a millimeter of being the same size. So what I did today was I actually moved these tire these holes in the rim closer to the center and then I made the rim uh how much I, did I take a half a millimeter off of the diameter of just the rim okay I I forget exactly I know I made the rim just a little bit smaller and part of the problem is um you'll see here the tire does not fit over the rim, so you kind of have to waller out the inside of that. Well, I don't want that. I just want the tire to fit over the rim without having to do extra work, right? That's the point of all this reduced labor. So, um, went ahead and did some adjusting to the rim. I made the tire just a bit narrower. You can see here that these two tires are not the same. They don't look the same width, and they're not. They're just, my plastic version is just a wee bit wide compared to the factory DCP. So I made my rim just a little bit narrower. Not a whole lot, but just enough to make a little difference. And then I also made this rim, this part right here, a bit narrower as well. Now I went ahead to, I went ahead and had a test print. I uploaded, I got my changes made and then I uploaded the file to uh, backfox.com and I am actually printing 3D printing in a rubbery material, and then I'm having the wheel, actually, I'm having my, my rim um, electroplated chrome to see how that goes. So version 2.0 has been ordered, so we'll set that one off to the side. Now I have some other ones. Now these are again my designs. I forget what I have here. Okay, I know what it is. This is a Diecast Promotions air horn for a 3D9 Peterbilt. It seems like I break those all the time coming, taking them apart. I managed to bust them. And as you can see here, this is the way they arrived in pieces. So you'll notice that one's got a peg broke. This one's got a peg broke. I don't know how many of these can be salvaged, but two of these are broken. Uh, these just came off the sprue, which is fine. That's okay. Excuse me. They can come off the sprue. That will be okay. Um, and then these two did not lose anything when they when they broke off the wire here. That I can easily remedy with a thicker wire. So this is an air horn uh, for a 389 Peterbilt. And let's see if it fits. So let's do a test fit on a 389 roof cap and see how well I did. Oh, look at that. That is close. Oh my gosh. So close. Well, that might even work just the way it is. Holy smokes. Okay. So I'm going to call this first, this test print of the 389 air horn a success. Oh man, that feels good. Hallelujah. A new source for these air horns. Now these do not match exactly the DCP air horn and for good reason. Right here is a weak spot on the DCP. Uh, I seem to always break them right here. If they're going to bust, this is where they break. Right at that joint uh, where the air horn uh, comes into this peg. So I made mine a little thicker. And 
hopefully that's going to be all right. I, I think my next move is to do one of two things. Make a rectangle that the front and the back wire to, or uh, then, then another move yet is to just print these individually. Well, the reason I don't like to print them individually is I'm not, I'm not certain how they're going to print individually, but I guess I'll never know until I try. So at this very moment, I kind of like to print them more than one at a time, uh, you know, in pairs or even in builder packs, because then you order five sets and they're really not that much more expensive because if you were to order five sets individually, they generally come, they cost more than if you buy, you know, 10 of them on a wire like I have here. So anyway, so let's call the air horns a success. Just maybe a minor change on how I, I put them together. We'll get those set off. All right, next, let's see what we have in this one. I already took these out of the package, so I'm seeing them the second time. Okay, this is a failure. This is a replacement mud flaps for Diecast Promotions Peterbilts. What I'll do here is I'll go ahead and glue these together, and then we'll just do a test foot and see how it even fits on a truck, all right? So hang on. I went ahead and glued these together during intermission, and we'll just see how well I put these together. Ooh, okay. So right out of the gate, I can already see that I need to make this space, I need to make this part right here wider. So you could, you could see right here these little circles. I don't even know why these are on the diecast promotions version, but I put my put them on there. Um, they are hitting this diecast here, and heaven forbid we we're not modifying the diecast. That's a pain in the butt. We want these to work right out of the gate. We don't want to be messing around with extra work. So I think I'm going to do a couple of things here now that I see them. One, I'm going to move these two lights in, and then I will make. Well, first thing I'll do is I'll make this bar here wider, and then I'll make these two lights, I'll move them in on the next version. And then, yeah, so that's that. Um, I could even, if I wanted to, make these just a wee bit narrower. You can see how far they stick out past these tires, which I don't like. Um, I've often thought that diecast promotions trucks the wheels set too close to the frame. However, we can remedy that with some washers I've been using these washers to, uh, especially on like stock trucks, how the tires sit so close or set in, just like this. They sit, they sit too far in between the mud flaps or the full fenders or whatever's on it. So I use these washers right here to spread those axles out, and I like that better. I mean, it just makes it look, makes it look a little better, I think. So I've got a couple of things I can do here to improve the look of that. So these are. That's adventures in 3D printing right there with me. So a couple of my designs here. There's uh, so here we've got the air horns. These are good to go. Excuse me, the exhaust, the miter cut pipes are good to go. My air horns are good to go, I think. Uh, we got to modify the mud flaps. These wheels and tires modifications are done. Now I'm just waiting on a test print. So, um, I think we're okay. My next project, I need to see if I can get these air horns electroplated, but I think these wires are too small for that process because I've tried other projects to get them electroplated with these tiny wires. That's one millimeter wire right there. I think it is. I'd have to go back and look. But I believe that's a one millimeter wire. And, and what happens is somewhere along the electroplating process, um, those wires break and the parts are destroyed. So uh, I've tried that before. So I'm going to have to work that out. And then, yeah. So those are my projects thus far. Again, if you guys want to learn, please go try Tinkercad. I mean to tell you, it is exceptionally user-friendly. If you have a teachable spirit and you want to learn, I mean, I have the desire to learn because I'm, and I'm not lying when I say I'm just frustrated when I can't find what I need, when I need it, and, or, you know, you know, there's a one time you could buy miter cut pipes pretty easy. Now I'm having to buy trucks for just these miter cut pipes and there's, 
there's a smarter way to do this than, than doing that. So we're going to avoid all that business. Uh, anyways, and then like these little tag axles right here. Golly, man, these are atrocious to find. But I And I need buckets of these because I got a lot of three-axle trucks coming up. Anyway, thank you for watching, spending some time with me. If you like what you saw, share it with a friend. I'd appreciate it. At least if they're wanting to learn or maybe you can be a blessing to them and say, hey, I learned this from Rock and H. This might help you. Man, you have done a good day's work by helping a friend out. Do that. I'd appreciate it. And just to be a good guy. Help them out. There's no use keeping all this knowledge to yourself. All right. Have a good one. See you in the next video.